Well, hi, everybody. This is Dim on the and We are live on a Friday evening, which means it's time for us to talk about the coping with life. And today uh, I am doing something that uh, was inspired by something that our admin Jody told me, which was she was making Cornish pasties this week. Now, if you've never heard of a Cornish pasty, it basically is a mini meat pie. And so I thought, what a great idea. Why don't we make some? Hi, it's good to see you. And uh, with your permission, we will make uh, not exactly Cornish pasties because uh, they have specific things inside them. And just to let you know that if you're making a Cornish pasty, you should actually be using a little bit of potato, a little bit of Swede, which in North America is called a rutabaga, um, and some onion. Now I, as you know, like to have a bit of color in my food. And so I will be adding lots of other colors to the mix um, just because I can. And it's, I can do what I like, right? It's my life, whatever makes me happy. But I will let you know that, I want to let you know that basically in a Cornish pasty, you've got um, steak, some sort of meat, steak uh, normally, um, or beef of some sort, uh, you normally have rutabaga and onion and some potato. So we're going to go right ahead and make uh, some of those. I'm also going to be playing with some um, pre-made cinnamon roll type stuff to make some desserts for myself for this evening. And that was inspired by a number of you talking about uh, you know getting pre-made pastries and I just thought, why not? So first of all, I've got some pre-made pastry here. This is puff pastry. And we're gonna make the uh, meat pies from that. And then what I've also got, as you know, these are my leftover bits of, of carrot and uh, some bok choy and some celery that I've been collecting over the last 24 hours as I cut up for making salads and things. I had bits left over. So I put them in my magic jar that I normally make my soup from. But this today is going to be added into our uh, pies. So first of all, I've got the oven already on at 350. <laughs> that would be 177 for everybody that doesn't live in North and in America. Um, <laughs> so, you know, the usual temperature. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but you can cook just about anything at 350. And that includes bread, if you really want to. So I've got the oven already warmed up. I've got um, a nonstick I've got a nonstick mat here because it just makes uh, clean up so much easier. You know, I can throw that into the dishwasher, no problem at all. So let's start. Uh, I'm going to take some of this pre made pastry and let me just wash my hands first. And what I thought we would do is to make two different things. I'm going to make one with beef and one with chicken or some, just to make it easy. And <laughs> so this was frozen puff pastry dough. And I'm just going to put a little bit of flour so it doesn't stick. Yeah. All right, so let's roll some of this out. Now you've got two choices here. Um, we can either make it um, a very thin crust or a medium crust. I don't know if you can see this. 
I'm not going to I'm not going to roll it any thinner than that because uh, otherwise the uh, the harder vegetables might poke through it. And what I've got here is uh, just a lid of something else. And I'm going to use that to cut. And hopefully we'll get two out of this. We'll see. Ah, a knife would be a good idea, sir. There we go. All right, so there is the first one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in here. Just spread it out a bit more. As you can see, that was almost exactly the right size. Nobody more surprised than I was. Okay. So, and then we'll keep that one for the second one. Now then, uh, let me just say hi to everybody before we get on with this. Hi to is this is hi it's good to see you. Hi to Jody, Jeannie, and obviously Charlotte. Hey, great. <laughs> uh, all right, so let me do this. And two things I want you to think about when you're making these, think about what is going to be directly against the pastry itself. And I would recommend that you put your onion in that space. All right. So, and the reason is it will protect from the harder um, vegetables because, you know, the onion will cook very quickly and that will soften everything else. The other thing is know that as the vegetables cook, as they cook, they will release some moisture. So good idea to put a little bit of flour in there as well on the inside. So we'll put a little bit there. Okay. And that will allow that if the if the vegetables let off liquid, that it'll turn it into a little bit of a gravy. Um, now, if you like Sal, you probably will cheat and use also a little bit of um, gravy mix because the gravy mix will also make it a very nice taste inside. Right, so now then, we've got a little bit of onion in there. The idea is to fill up sort of one half. It would have helped if I had that sort of centered a little bit better. So we're going to do that, and we're going to put in some meat. Now, what I did is I just got some stir fry uh, meat. Why? Because it's pretty, it was pretty lean and the price was very good. Uh, so I thought that was a good thing to do. And we'll just use a little bit up. Now, I want you to think here the smaller the pieces, the easier it will cook. So when you're making pasties, think small pieces rather than large chunks as you would for a stew all right so i'm just putting pretty small pieces of meat in there i think we'll do another one of those okay so we've got our meat, we've got that. I'm going to put this back in the fridge. After meat, I would like to put in some salt and pepper. It's just the way that I do it. So I just want to make sure we've got the pepper in there. I'm not adding salt because I'm trying to reduce the amount of salt that I have. 
Now, let's think about some vegetables. Um, this is a, 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 not a turnip, what's it called? Oh, can't believe I did this. Yes, it is a turnip, isn't it? No. <laughs> Jody, what's one of these called? <laughs> I never know what these are called in America. Um, help me here. Hi, Sharon. Good to see you as well. All right. Parsnip, thank you. That's the right word for it. That's the one I couldn't think of. All right. Now, this has got a very interesting taste. Thanks, Charlotte. Um, this has got a really interesting taste to it. And I prefer it to doing a uh, rutabaga. So I'm just going to use my potato peeler to cut some thin strips. As you know, I, I like to do it that way. So I'm just going to add some taste to it there. And the idea is to keep away from that outer edge. So we'll put a little bit like that. Mm, even smells good. I'm going to put this in some water in a second. And greenery. I'm going to give you guys some choices. The greenery, we can add a little bit of zucchini, a little bit of bok choy, or a little bit of uh, celery for our greenery. Well, we do know that we're going to have some <laughs> we are definitely going to have some green onion in there. So I'll just put a little bit in like that. That's good. <laughs> I have such fun doing these things. Um, all right. So we got the green onion on top there. So We've got onion and green onion. We've got parsnip. Oh, we haven't got any potato. So normally, I'm pretty certain all of you will peel your potatoes. Uh, you peel your potatoes and put them in. I don't. I like to eat the fiber on the outside of a potato. So what I'm going to do is remember that we want... Uh, we want that it will cook easily. So I'm going to cut it up this way and then into small squares. There we go. I might have too much here. That looks about right. So we'll put the rest of it in our magic jar, which we can use later. Carrot. I'd like some carrot in mine because I need more color. There we go. And some carrot. That's looking pretty full. Celery. Who said celery? A couple of you said celery. I can please you. I actually would have liked bok choy in there now, but it's a bit full. So we'll just, what we'll do is we'll add some celery garnish to it, right? Just to give it. A little bit of celery flavor. We'll just use the leaves. There we go. Now, before you close it up, that's way too much, so it's never going to close over there. Hmm. <laughs> I, you know, I'm going to do it anyway, aren't I? Let me think. Let me take out a little bit of what, what's taking up the volume, the meat. Well, we want the meat in there. Let's take out a few bits of potato. We'll drop those in the magic jar. Okay. Uh, the whole reason I'm concerned about how much is I don't want the um, pastry to break. Yeah, that's a bit better. And so before we actually <clears throat> close it, I'm just going to drizzle a little bit of oil on the outside so that it'll seal. I'm just using a little bit of 
olive oil here. There we go. Like that. Yum. Now, there's that part of me that goes, mm, I think I'm going to put a squidge of HP sauce on top because I can. Sounds like fun to me. Okay. And then we're going to close it. Come on now. You can do this. Get in there. You know what I forgot to do? I forgot to put some oil at the bottom of this before I started. Not my braid is smooth, but we can make a plan, people. Let's hope that it comes apart anyway. Will it come? Gently, gently. So, if you're using one of these, a really good idea to oil it first. Silly me. There you go. <laughs> yes, you can do this, right? All right, there we go. All right, now, uh, can you see this? I hope so. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just curl the edge up like this. And there are lots of different ways you can seal the edge, and you've probably got your own way of doing it. Um, I know that a lot of people roll it and then pinch it, roll it and then pinch it, roll it and then pinch it, which is, you know, not a bad way. So you can just go like this. Okay. And that looks pretty easy, doesn't it? Nothing wrong with that at all. The other thing is um, we're going to put a little bit of egg wash on there. Just want to put these vegetables in water. Keep them hydrated. Right, and an egg wash is just really easy. <laughs> Take an egg. And I'm just going to stir that up. And then before we put the egg wash on, I'm going to take a sharp knife and just make a couple of slits in the pastry so the steam can get come out. And then we're just going to baste it with our egg wash. And that will give it a lovely um, golden color when it cooks. Okay, so I'm going to put that... on that transfer tool. There we go. All 
All right, so that's our beef one. Now let's see if I can do the second one in a slightly more intelligent way. Not necessarily going to happen, but we can try. So let's just clean up here a little bit. All right, let me just uh, see what comments we've got here. Ah, good to see you, Sandy. Sandy, I know you've got a birthday coming up soon. As does Isabel. I should actually check where they are. Hold on one second. Let me just do the birthdays while you're both here. Um, I do that in the lunchtime one, and I forget to do it in the evening because I've got my mind on cooking. Just hold on one second. Let's see where the birthdays are. All right, we've got, uh, we had Nana's on the second. Isabel, yours is tomorrow. Uh, have a wonderful birthday tomorrow, Is. Uh, Kimmy has hers on the ninth and Sandy's on the 10th. So awesome. All right, now we've put, first of all, let's get this bit right. Let's get a little bit of oil on here. <laughs> Seeing as I forgot that last time. So it doesn't stick, hopefully. Okay, and then we're going to roll out another piece. We'll put a little bit of uh, flour on first. There we go. And we'll roll this one out. Now, this is a great way um, to also use up leftovers. Um, I'm going to actually use some leftover chicken for my second one. Just try and get this a little bit more round. See how far off round it is. Oh, pretty good. Just about got it. Yay. That'll do. Now you could also put a oh, I'm sorry about that, everybody. <laughs> you could also put um uh a round, you know, a plate down, upside down, and use it as your uh, marker. I just happen to know that this is just about the right size that I need, so that works well for me. Okay, so we've got a little bit of dough left over there. I'm certain I'll find a use for that. Let's spread it out a little bit more. I'll try not to overfill it this time. Okay, let me get the chicken. Oh, excuse me. I'm struggling with the cold at the moment, so forgive me a second. Sorry, I just don't want to spend the whole time sneezing, so I'm just going to wash my hands again. All right, where were we? So this is going to be the chicken one. So now I want to start with a little bit of um, flour but what I'm going to do all right remember the flour is there so that if uh, the vegetables leak moisture it will turn it into a little bit of a gravy we like that 
The chicken is soft, so I'm not going to worry as much about it. I'm going to put in a little bit of onion. There we go, a little bit of onion for taste. I'm going to put in some carrot. Just as a base. The chicken is already cooked, so I'm just going to cut it into... Sorry. So I'm just going to cut this chicken up into small pieces. And it already has some seasoning on it. Okay, that looks good. Don't overfill it, so. <laughs> uh, we were talking about, you know, where you can eat vegetables in season. So I'm going to use a little bit of the parsnip because I love the taste. And thank you, Jody, for reminding me about parsnip. And then I'm going to add some bok choy into this because I want some green. So I'm just going to cut that up into very small pieces. There we go. And a little bit of green onion. What have I put on? Red. Okay, let's have a little bit of red in there. If you notice, I, I'm constantly trying to make sure I've got as many colors in my food as possible. Remember, that's what Benji taught us. The more colorful it is, the more likely it is to be healthy. So we'll just put a couple of bits of red pepper in there. The rest goes in the magic jar. I don't have any potato. Okay. Now it's probably going to cook for about forty five minutes. There we go. And so, need some oil around the edge. Oops. All right, now then, let's see if we can close this one up without it having too much of a problem. So I'm just going to lift this bottom bit up and then encase everything, if I can. The bits that don't fit in can come out. All right, now another way to seal it, um, which is the way I was originally taught, was um, that you actually just use a fork to seal it. But owing to the fact I've definitely overfilled both of these, it might not be the greatest plan. So I'm going to do it this way. There we go. And then before we put it in, remember we've got to poke holes on the top. Fork works really well for that, and we need to put 
the egg on top. And then I'm going to put it with this other one. And then I'm going to pop these into a, an oven at, at 350 or 177 uh, centigrade and let it cook for about three quarters of an hour. Okay. And yeah, that one better one. Try Here we go. All right, let's just talk about this for a second. Um, Jody's saying I have overfill issues as well. Yes, you know, <laughs> I think it's human nature, isn't it? So the, the point is, what is the likelihood that my... Um, Pasty will actually burst. Pretty good. Do I really care? No. Nope. Um, so now what I'm going to do is take that little bit of dough that was left over <laughs> and play. Now, what I think what we will do here is just have fun because it's only a little bit. We'll put in a little bit of that, a bit of potato there. There's our meat. I put it away, didn't I? Oh, no, we got some chicken. Um, put a couple of bits of chicken in there. So now we're going to have a little pizza pie pocket here. I think I'm going to put a little bit of that fruity HP on there. Come on. So good. And that's chicken. I think I'm going to put a little bit of paprika on it. good and then I'm going to sort of make a plan see if I can oh I've overfilled it again well done so yum it's gonna be so good Stick a hole in it, glaze, egg wash, and put it in with the others. I forgot that a little bit. That's definitely going to drizzle. Yum. All right. Now then, what I wanted to do is talk to you a little bit about... How many of you believe that pastry is bad for you? Uh, I want to have that discussion for a second. Because like anything, it's all about moderation. If you're going to have a lot of pastry, yes, it's going to be bad for you. But if you just have it occasionally, 
um, and you don't have too much. No, it's okay. Um, what I was surprised at, quite honestly, was if you, oh, by the way, how many of you, um, if you're really short of money, hi, Antoinette, good to see you. If you're really short of money, here was my plan B. All right. I went to my dollar store and I picked up, um, this is rustic beef barley um, dinner, if you like. And quite honestly, it's a meal unto itself. But how many of you can see that it's got meat, it's got vegetables, it's got all the goodies in here? The only thing is it's in a liquid. So what I would recommend if you want to make a, a, a meal for next to nothing, this whole can of Primo cost me about a buck fifty at the dollar store. you got to admit that's not much money. So, you know, all I would do if I were using this is I would strain it, uh, strain the liquid, don't waste the liquid, strain the liquid off and just use the, the goodness in, you know, that's inside, the vegetable. And let me see if it tells us what's in there. I'm sure it does. Do I have glasses here? Must have. What did I do with my glasses, people? That's not going to fall anymore, is it? Um... Okay, let me see what it's got in here. Seasoned beef, uh, sodium, barley, carrots, diced tomatoes, tomatoes, juice, calcium chloride, citric acid, dehydrated potatoes, green peas, tomato paste, celery, wheat flour, a little bit of sugar, dehydrated onions, sea salt, modified cornstarch, natural flavors, Dehydrated beef stock, a little bit of garlic powder, so I'm allergic to garlic for those that don't know. Uh, beef fat, a little bit of yeast extract, caramel color, herbs. So basically, it's got a bit of everything in. All right. But think about that. That was, I think, a buck fifty. And that would make probably four easily. Uh, that's a great money saver. So then I started to think, what about if I did this, you know, could you do the same with clam chowder? And obviously that would be for Fridays, for those of you who don't eat meat on Fridays. This has got clam broth, potatoes, vegetable oil, seasoned clam, celery, modified cornstarch, wheat flour, salt, monosodium glucosamate, oh, that stuff. Soya protein, dried onion, sugar, something I can't pronounce, which means it can't be good for you. But basically contains cod, milk, and chicken. All right, so that's a nice, oh, it's got chicken in it. Oh, the flavor contains cod, milk, and chicken. So just the flavor of it. Again, I, probably another four pasties made out of that, but you'd still have the liquid. And the liquid I want you to think about because uh, what I've started to do, and I don't know if any of you do that, I, I do like sauces and gravy with my food. And so... Uh, what I do is when I cook, I actually will make, this is a chicken gravy. This is a chicken peanut gravy. All right. And I just keep it in my fridge uh, for the week. And then anytime I do chicken, I can just use some of this. It's inclined to get a little bit gelatinous. Um, but what I do is just add a bit more water and, and heat it up. And then I've got a really nice gravy. And then I can add a little bit of whatever I want to add to this. Um, to make it, you know, to to make it taste different, I might add some mandarins to it, right? That make it a really nice sauce, or add some soy sauce to it, or whatever. But you know, every day I can add something different if I want to have that. So what I would do is, if I strained this, I would keep the liquid in a jar, you know, one for the beef and one for the um, cod and chicken and then use that as a source for other things. Don't work hard.
I want to know if any of you tried um, this thing that we did last week, which was the apple sauce in Jello. Did any of you try that? Because I want to tell you that that has been absolutely great for me. Uh, whenever I get what I call a really need for something sweet, I will grab this. Why? Gelatin is not what we call bad for you. Um, and the apple sauce, again, very good. So a really nice little treat. I, I have it sort of at lunchtime where I go, okay, fine, I've got color for my lunch. And do I have a treat? And I'll, I'll grab this. For those of you who, did anybody try the granola treats that we did last week? Um, the reason I ask Uh, the reason that I asked is because we made, what, about six last week, I think. I had the last one today, so I immediately made another six. And that tells you all you need to know, all right? This is the granola at the bottom and then some chocolate at the top. You guys didn't get to see me eat it last week. But can you hear that it's crispy? <laughs> and again, really nice treat. So both those are definitely on my list of things I will do um, it, you know, each time they run out. I think this is the last one of my gelatin and uh, applesauce. You could also put stewed apples in here, but I would recommend that you strain it, get the liquid out of it before you put it in. All right, any questions? I'm going to be continuing to eat my treat now. Mm. I'm waiting for the chocolate to melt a little bit before I break the tooth. Mm. Pretty easy. So I want you to get creative. If you're making pasties, you do understand that your creativity will be um as good as you want it to be All right well, when i say as good as you want it to be my goal is to use up a lot of uh, vegetables but i keep buying more I, jody and the rest of you i have now totally filled up my huge freezer and this one with our cooking each week so I'm going to probably have to stop doing the cooking things or make very small amounts that I can just eat during the week. Just amazing. I want to put that in the fridge, put these away, and then what we're going to do is um, have fun with some cinnamon rolls. One second, people. Just want to put most of this away. I'll be right back. And have any of you started holding on to the ends of your um, the ends of your vegetables to make soup? Have any of you been doing that? You make your own little magic jar. 
I've eaten soup all week just from my magic jar each day. So I really recommend it. You'll be amazed at how many little bits. Your high black magic watching Christmas movies with hot chocolate and Christmas cookies. I mean, what a wonderful way to spend your Friday evening. I would say that that is a wonderful way to just relax and welcome. Nice to see you. Jody's saying, yes, nothing goes to waste here. We put it in a freezer bag for soup. Yep. Um, put it in a freezer bag, put it in. Um, I find just putting it in water. I just blend it up the next day and it is great. So now I've got two things I want to show you. One of them is an experiment I did this week. I know you like it when I do experiments. Uh, I played with, with something this week that really blew my mind because it worked. And that was that I made my wraps in a different way. You know, I, I like to have, I, I love to make my own bread, but I realize if I eat bread every day, even if it's healthy, it probably isn't too good for me. But a wrap is much thinner and therefore not a bad idea. So, excuse me a second. Hmm, so good. As that chocolate softens up, it'll be less painful on my feet. <laughs> um, and I thought I'd show you what I do. I think you all know, and um, Sandy makes her own bread as well, but I constantly have a little bit of yeast growing on my countertop. Okay. And that's literally just flour and water. And every day I take some out and put a little bit of flour back in. And you can probably see that it's bubbly. Um, and that's exactly what you want. Not hard work. But what I do every day, let me show you, is I take a little bit of this. See if you look at it now. You see it's sort of stringy. Okay, so I take a little bit of this in a ramekin or a mason jar. And then I add, this is a mix of rye flour and whole wheat. I add a little bit of flour to it. Um, if I feel like it, I will add a little bit of uh, chia. And a little bit of flex. I'm going to add a little bit of oil. And then I'm just going to put in enough water that it is capable of running a little bit, okay? So I'm just gonna put some water in there. And the reason I wanted to show you how I do this is I just mix the water in with it to get it all incorporated. It's pretty well incorporated, but it's not runny yet. So I'm going to add some more water. 
not too much. There we go. Ah, there we go. Now, as you can see, it's running through the fork easily, right? It's not staying on the fork. So that's about the right consistency. Everybody okay with that? Let me see if there are any comments, any questions. Ah, Sharon, what a great idea. Sharon's saying that she made apple dumplings with the crescent roll. Yeah, I couldn't get the crescent roll dough today, so I just thought I'd show you another idea. All right, but great idea. So anyway, got this. So now it is just, it is thin enough that it goes through the fork. That means that it's pretty runny, but it's also well incorporated. Okay. Now, all I'm going to do is take a plate. By the way, I can add whatever I like in there. What did we have left over? You know, I could add, you know, salt and pepper or onion or whatever. But all I'm going to do is just literally put a little bit of oil on the plate. And just the, I'm going to put a little bit of black pepper on there. And then just literally pour this onto the plate. Okay, and then what I do is I just swirl it around the plate a little bit just to even it out. Get it? Then I shake it. Shake and not stirred, people. As 007 would say. All right, and now it's pretty flat. And now I'm going to stick it in the microwave for about a minute and a half. Now, this is a cell experiment. <laughs> However, whilst that is cooking, here is my um, starter that I've been using. So what I need to do is top that up with uh, a little bit more flour, like that, and a little bit more water. And then mix it up, and it's going to be ready for tomorrow. And about once a week, I transfer it out of this um, container uh, into another one and just wash this container out. I just don't know why, but I like to do that. And the difference is, now that you see it with the fresh flour in it, it's not looking bubbly. It will do in probably about an hour. It'll be all bubbly again. So we just put it in there. I put the lid on, but I don't put it on tightly. I, it's loose so that any gas uh, needs to escape can. Nice and easy. And there we have it. So simple. And if I'm making bread, I will just take probably that much again and, and make a and put it in with uh, the flour and everything when I'm making bread. So I've, it's like everlasting bread, I think they call it. All right, so now then. So this was, after two minutes, it looks like this. Uh, it's not quite done. So what we're going to do is loosen the edges. 
And what I do is I just use a spatula and I just go around the edge like this, loosen up the edge. Okay. And I'm going to give it another 30 seconds. And that'll be quite interesting. By the way, for those of you who peel your potatoes and your parsnips and carrots and stuff, uh, what do you do with the peel? That's my next question. You know, what do you do with the peel? <laughs> it's appealing to me to know. Um, because just tossing it with a little bit of black pepper and a little bit of olive oil and cooking it quietly in your oven will make very nice little treats. No way. Okay. As you can see, it's still not quite done, nearly done. So I'm going to give it another 30 seconds, but it's very good. And my attitude every day is if I make it, I can eat it. In other words, I don't go and buy bread, but if I'm going to make it, then I can eat it. And I quite honestly find it um, really helps. Uh, and I wanted to show you. This is a small one that I made this morning. Okay. And what I do is I put cream cheese and thinly cut uh, cucumber in, and that's a snack for me. You can probably see, can you see through how thin that is? You can actually see the light through it. But it's the perfect little snack. And I literally just put cream cheese and stick some very finely cut um Cucumber in there, some more black pepper, and done. Okay. Come on. <laughs> of course, when I do it, it comes off much more easily normally, but we're just going to not quit on it. Will it come up now? Come on. Come, Liz. Okay, what I'm going to do is just turn it over. Okay, and when you turn it over, you will notice that the, the bottom side is still um, a bit doughy, all right? So what I'm inclined to do is just put this like this in my toaster oven for about... Hmm, Five, ten minutes just on a very on the lowest peak and just let it finish cooking. So it's on 150, and we'll just let that keep warming. Now it looks like hard work, but quite honestly, it isn't. All right, uh interesting. Antoinette says that she feeds her 
um, potato and skins and so forth to her ducks. Yeah. Here's something else I wanted to say to you. How many of you put your food into your garbage under your sink, your, your leftover scraps and so forth? I really want to tell you that I found a much more uh, effective way to keep it. Uh, we get, uh, once a week, we have a, uh, what do you call it, compost uh, collection. But I have a composter. But it, even if you don't, I'd like to suggest this. I've got four of these. And what I do is all during the day, whether I've got uh, eggshells or banana peel or coffee grinds, or um, paper towel, uh, tissues, whatever, they all go in here, all right? And it's sealed like this, no smell. And what I do, and I love it, I've got four of them. And if I, you know, if this one fills up and it needs to go to the compost, but I don't want to go because it's a horrible rainy day. I don't have to worry. Uh, I just put it out on my deck like this. No critters can get to it. And it will just keep like this. Um, for, and then about once a week, when the weather's nice, I go out and I collect my, my little containers like this. And I take them to my composter, my closed composter. And I, I put it all in there. Uh, with some extra paper and stuff to um, mop up the liquids. So uh, what I wanted to say, though, is I really love the fact that there are no sort of food smells in my kitchen anymore because everything's contained. Uh, for those of you who've got big freezers and so forth, another thing you can do is actually put it into a plastic bag and freeze it and then just take it out when you want to. But this allows me, this will normally last me about two to three days, depending on what I'm cooking. And that means that I, with four of them, I can go a week without having to go to the compost if I don't want to. And when I do want to, nice and easy to carry. Don't get dirty or anything else. It's wonderful. They look so good. <laughs> They're just beginning. They are just beginning to ooze. So do you want to see them now before they ooze too much? <laughs> Let's do that, right? Let's go with <laughs> as good as they are. Hold on a second. So what do you think? Beautifully golden brown, all right? And we know that it's cooked because everything's hot enough to start oozing through. <laughs> I got to take a picture, people. Where's my phone? All right, so uh, it does look yummy, doesn't it, Sharon? <laughs> Which one do you want me to cut into? The beef one or the chicken one? <laughs> so exciting. Don't 
so remember, um, these were overfilled, and I thought they were going to be a total disaster, but they were not. Yay. I suppose you want to see inside both of them, right? Okay. <laughs> Let's try the little one first. You know I'm going to have a problem here, people. So this tells me that it can just do with a little bit more cooking. All right. So I'm going to put that back in. What I'm what I wanted to see was is the pastry completely cooked? And no. I think it could do with a little bit more. Not a lot more, but a little bit more on that one. Maybe that one was a bit thicker. Let's try the bigger one and see. Oh, yeah, this one's fine. All right, so there you go. Hang on. Pretty good. So what I'm going to do is just put this back into the warm oven. And just as the oven cools down, they can continue to cook. And that means by the time, um, by the time <laughs> it's, I want my dinner, I, I will have choices. All right, now again, the good news is because I did it on this silicone mat, cleanup will be a breeze. I just roll up this mat. I'm going to throw it in the water. And then that will go in the dishwasher. The actual pan plate itself, okay, just wipe it down in case it's got any crumbs on it. But that just goes right back where I found it because that hasn't got any gunge on it at all. And I've probably had that tray for about 30 years. <laughs> but it works. All right, any questions before we get on to dessert? I know I'm eating mine, but so, so I think that's a good idea. You know, the baked apple thing, I think it's a great idea. But how about we do an easy version of it? What do you think? Um, but what about a cinnamon? Roll, apple. Right. Now, you guys all use this stuff, so you know how to open the can. I know you're going to be surprised to hear this is not part of my repertoire. I normally make my own. So I presume you pop off the lid. Am I correct in that? Does it give me directions? Preheat the, preheat the oven at 400. Hmm. Hmm, okay. That means we can do this. This is my wrap still drying out. So what I'm going to do is put my wrap on top here. And it can now we'll put my toaster oven up. To full volume. Okay. So did anybody tell me how you open this thing? Glasses, so. I'm certain you guys know. Oh. P. 
peel and pop. For shape opening, point the can ends away from you and others. Do I just pop it off? Can't be that difficult, surely. I've got a feeling maybe you cut it off, no? Oh, there we go. Got it. Oh! Peel the corner. Well, I forgot to do that, didn't I? But apparently it decided to work anyway. Thanks, Sandy. All right, so here we've got a cinnamon roll. <laughs> oh, how much fun is that? Oh, this is going to be great fun. But I'm going to turn this into... A flat cinnamon roll. Way too much. And I was thinking that that idea about an apple and cinnamon was a great idea. So now we're going to make a dessert out of the same principle, right? We're just going to take one segment of the cinnamon roll. Oh, excuse me. Like that. is can you ever have too much cinnamon no it's good for you so i'm going to put a little bit more inside and then i've got a gala apple here and thanks to all of you i know that a number of you talked about uh, this idea last week and then Jeannie also talked to me about it during the week so i'm just going to cut a couple of pieces there for like this Same idea as we did with vegetables, but we're going to do it with fruit. Remember, the smaller the pieces, the more quickly it will cook. Like that. So let's put in a little bit of apple. <laughs> yum, yum, yum. <laughs> One minute. I thought we'd do one with um, raisins and then another one with cherries. No, with um, cranberries. So put a few raisins in there. And then Got a feeling I should have a little bit of egg in there, right? To help it seal. That's what I didn't do. There we go. Oh yeah. Yum. You, you guys are really a very bad example to me because I have such fun doing these things. Um, and I think it will cook really well. I want to be able to contain it. So I'm going to actually put it in here uh, because then... Okay, that will hold it together. Uh, yeah. Uh, you could also, you know, just put it inside uh, a cupcake liner, right? You could put it inside one of these, but I, I've got silicone molds, so why don't I put them inside there? So good, let's do the second one. That's such fun. Why have I never done that before? 
Don't know, but I have now. Could be a whole new go-to for me. Yeah, a little bit of flour. What a great thing to do for company. I've got company coming next week, and I might do some of these just uh, for the table because I think they'll look great. And festive for this time of the year, right? All right, so a little bit of apple. What did I do? I think this time we'll do some cranberries in there. Oh yeah, we need some egg wash from the ends. Oop. I'm good at doing that, people. And then we will pull up, and then pull up, pull up and seal, pull up and seal, push in, pull up and seal, pull up and seal. Now, the ends are not perfectly, it's not perfectly sealed here. I've still got uh, an air hole there for stuff to get out. So we're just going to drop that in there. Let's have another one of those. What did they say about peel this from the corner? <sighs> Must be easy to do if you don't have arthritis. Got it, got it. Okay, guys, you, you taught me. good so A great thing to do with kids all right for any of you who've got grandchildren or children um you know to help you know get them to roll it out and then put a little bit you know put their own stuff inside i think it'll be a great thing i'd love to do this with the kids next time i get to travel so there we go so lift and seal in there and I think we got enough for one more okay let's do that Certainly easy enough to do. You know, not hard work at all. And I bet you they taste great. Yes, there we go. And a bit more raisin in that one. The raisins. Egg wash.
stretch stuff. Overfilled this one a bit, but we've made that mistake before and it came out fine. Okay, so there we go. That's that one. And I think what we will do, how many more of these have I got? Ah, three more. Waste not, want not. Let's just put one in there. And one in there. And the last one. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Oh, yum, yum, yum. It's even got the icing for it. We'll do that later. Yeah, I did. I, I put the cloth inside the egg wash. Very clever. So what we can do is to put this inside a ramekin. Put some oil in there first. Okay, guys, where's my button? Stop it sticking. Okay, and we'll stick that in there. Yum. This is already done. Did it say how long? Oh, oh, this could be awkward, people. <laughs> it did say for 350, but it didn't tell me for how long. Bake for 13 to 17 minutes. Have we got that much time? Yeah, just great. So I'm going to put these in. Now, how many of you are going? I want to come for dessert, so. Yeah, Sandy, that's what I'm always looking for, is how can I take something that, you know, that is tasty, but make it more healthy, all right? Like the uh, Cornish pasties, I want all the different colors of, of vegetable in there just to make it more healthy. Uh, and by the way, when you plate it up, think about that. What are you going to plate it up with? No, we know it's already got fruit and um, vegetables and meat in it. Hang on, people. I've got to think. So we know it's already got vegetables in it, um, but I will probably eat, eat the Cornish pasty with a salad. How many of you can see that happening? And what if I had a cup of soup with it as well? You know, again. So we're going to put that away. The egg wash. Thank you, Jody. I love these little containers. They are wonderful. And because Jody sent these to me as a present. And uh, they are just ideal for when we're doing these cooking things. So, And I love the fact it's got a little lid you can put on it. All right, so now then, that's done with. Put that in the garbage. No, two different garbages. No, that's all going in the main garbage. It's got too many bad uh, things on it. All right, so now. What did we say? It takes about 18 to 20 minutes, right? So if I give it another 20, 
it should be fine. Mm. I wanted to let you know that these health bites, the ones with the granola and chocolate, I am amazed how long they keep me satisfied for. In other words, the fact that I've been eating one um, while I've been doing the broadcast, quite honestly, I probably won't be hungry at the end of this. Will I eat one of those pasties anyway? Yeah. Now, I just need to clean off my board. All right, guys, what did you do with the lid for this? Anybody seen it? Seriously, how far can it be? There it is. Okay, that can go away. And we're just putting some stuff away while we wait for this stuff to cook. And And now that the chocolate is at room temperature, it's easy to eat. You know what I mean? It was a bit solid before because it came straight out of the fridge, but now it's ideal. Mm. So, Jody, thank you so much for the idea of doing meat pies. Now, I've, I've got another little thing I want to just add to this because if it's just one or two of you, Then if you open up a can like this, think what you can make. Um, what I would do is probably make a couple of pasties out of it and then take the other half and put it into a mason jar. And, you know, with that little bit of uh, pastry that was left over, just cut a small round and put it on top of the mason jar. Like one of these, and then just cut a small round to go on top of it. Um, I wouldn't put it in there because it'll go soggy. What I will do is freeze it separately, and then when I go to cook it, I will just drop uh, the frozen disc on top of it and then cook it all together. Does that make sense? And by the way, um, what about if you added more vegetables, if you if you took the liquid that was left and added a few more vegetables, cut up small so that they cook quickly, and then um, maybe some curry powder. Yeah. You could get a really big bang for your $1.50 $1. out of this can if you needed to. I can't remember what I paid to buy the store-bought um, pastry. I could have made my own, but I knew that I'd probably need the time in putting it all together, and that's why I didn't, um, you know, do it online for you. I mean, on do it live. But you can, you know that I can do it because you see me do it. So that would be easy enough, really. But I also know that not everybody has the equipment or the will to make pastry. So... Today we did it with store-bought, and it was pretty darn easy, wasn't it? It makes you wonder why would you do it any other way. I know. Just going to rinse this off, people, and then we're just about ready.
right. Yum. That looks like a mess. Clean that up. So, <laughs> it's going to taste so good. Jody, when you had your Cornish pasties, what did you serve them with? Or did you just have a little bit of HP sauce? Did you, you know, and I'd like to know what you guys would serve with it. I quite honestly don't know many people that wouldn't enjoy a Cornish pasty, quite honestly, all right? And especially because it's a change, right? It doesn't look the same. It's not just half a chicken breast or a chicken breast or, you know, um, it, it looks different and it, you know, surely tastes different if you use the vegetables that are in season. For example, um, as you know, I use parsnip and carrot and onion you know, wonderful. Uh, but you can also use corn and celery and whatever. You know, it's like you can make them, and I'm pretty certain that most families would love them. And some families like things with a gravy or a sauce, and some don't. You know your family. It depends what you grew up with. You know, in my household where I grew up, if it didn't have gravy or a sauce, you know, it wasn't a meal. Did any of you grow up like that? <laughs> I don't know why, but it was like everything had gravy, everything, um, or it had a sauce. All right, so Jody's saying she had hers just with the HP sauce to dunk it in. <laughs> it would have been wonderful. But, and because her appetite wasn't too high, they had steak, carrots, onion, potatoes, and parsnips inside, yes. And... Obviously, you really enjoyed them because you were heartbroken that they were finished. And so now I've got another little trick that I wanted to show you. Rich, um, if I talk to you guys about pastry shells, do I, and I, maybe I should show you. Hang on a second. First of all, do you all agree that making a, a pasty like that is meal prepping and portion control? All right. The same as making the cinnamon buns inside a muffin tin is portion control. All right. Now, what I wanted to say is that if for some reason you don't, don't want that size, you want something smaller. What about using pastry shells? And what I do is I will bring two shells out. I don't want to open this up, but I'll take two shells out. And the bottom part I leave as it is. And the, the second one I take out of the shell and use it as the top. So I will then fill it with whatever and then put the other one on top of it and just pinch the sides. Do any of you do that? Ah. Okay, Jody is saying that when Lionel has them, she will do it with a salad or a cup of soup on the side. Yes, I, you know, it's a really, it is a meal unto itself. You, you know, it's got potato, it's got vegetables, it's got meat, uh, and it's got some pastry. So you know that, you know, it's a full meal and balanced. Now, I want to put these back. So you all get the idea about using two of these, one for the bottom, one for the top. And remember to put a little hole in it so that the heat can escape. I am really sad to tell you I had to negotiate to be able to make enough room to put those in my freezer. That's how bad it's going. <laughs> it was so funny. Hang on a second. All right. So they're cooking pretty well. They look pretty good. That's going to go on top. 
Uh, I presume I need them to cool down before I can put the frosting on top. I would be correct in that, for those of you who are experts at this one. Now, another thing, a little hint that I wanted to give you. Um, I buy mixed nuts. Uh, and I put them in a glass jar just so I can see what's there. And if a recipe calls for some cashews, I dig through my my mixed nuts and find my cashews. If it calls for peanuts, I dig through my jar and find the peanuts. Does that make sense? So, you know, I'm pretty sure that anything that might call for some nuts uh, or almonds, you know, I've got almonds in there as well by the look of it. Yeah, and hazelnuts. So uh, think about it. I, I use my nuts as much for decoration on things as I do for just, you know, taking a quick handful. Just a thought. All right. This was pretty easy. What have we got? We've got the pasties done. We've got the cinnamon rolls done. Yeah, they look done. Hold on, people. Let's get those out so you can see them. Did I forget anything? <laughs> oh, yeah. They're about to be really done. <laughs> they look so good. Okay, let me think here. I want to... Yeah, this one has pulled away from the edge. Beaut Sorry, people. This one pulled away from the edge beautifully. Isn't that cute? Did I make that? <laughs> so did this one. And I really quite like the way that they turned into little hearts. And this one opened up and it still looks fine and everything looks great inside. So I'm really happy with that. Isn't that fun? Maybe I'll put the um, crispier ones on the side. I just want to drizzle some of this over the top. Uh, this is a cream cheese topping, I believe. Now, for those of you who know me well, the challenge will be not to eat them all tonight because they do look good, and I bet you they taste great. Good, don't they? Uh, do I need to cut them open? Or I think they're pretty self-evident with that one that was already opened on its own. But they're ideal. Definitely a do again. And definitely a great thing to do. Like I've got a, um, a group coming. Mm -hmm. 
and this would be, you know, a great little, you know, um, great little handheld dessert sort of thing for people. So let's take a picture of that too. Oh, that looks so good. Ah, oh. do you think, do you think you would allow me to have dessert before my uh, pasty? <laughs> but first, the picture, right? Eh? So apple filled cinnamon rolls. How many of you are going, I could do that. Uh, did I get a vote on? Sure. Thank you, Sandy. <laughs> Which is the smallest one? Let me open up the smallest one so you can see. Why would I open up the smallest one? How, how pathetic is that? Oh, no, it's not a bad idea. Probably have another one anyway. <laughs> okay, let me open one up for you. Oh, that's worth another picture, you know. Hang on, guys. Can you see that? How about that? Isn't that nice and easy? That's probably a little warm. How many of you going, Sal, that's warm fruit? Ah, something may be beeping. Okay, thank you, Jody. Mm-hmm, you're right. Oh, guys, um, <laughs> sorry, I walked away eating this. Yeah, definitely worth doing. Um, very simple. But really tasty. Oh, these? Um, Sandy, I, I, I love these. You know, I bought them once to do something for Valentine's Day, and or I do them all the time. I bake bread rolls, heart-shaped bread rolls, and all sorts of things. Um, it's one of those little gifts that keep on giving, right? Okay, guys. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there a saying they look delicious? Uh, delicious. Imagine with curd, uh, cheese, curd cheese in them with apple. Yes, you know, that would be another idea. Um, so what I want you to do, <laughs> what I want you to do is to see the possibilities. How many of you could see the possibilities I just got to have the other half now, guys. Um, see the possibilities of the pasties. You know, great for leftovers, great for um, getting more vegetables into your family without them really noticing it. Um, what makes this such a great dessert, obviously, is the frosting and the cinnamon. Now... Before I go, one thing I did want to warn you about. Mm. Do not, do not make these. <laughs> mm. Especially do not make them Halloween week when I've already got a house full of candy. Jody. Um, important to mention Canned soups in a can. What do we know? If it's in a can, the sodium content is going to be high. I was horrified at the sodium content, um, which is 26% for one cup. And this is two cups in here. However, 
let's not think about the negative of this. How would you lower the sodium level? Again, I would say strain the liquid and, you know, portion the liquid out that you can use it for other things, you know, use it as a, um, you know, freeze it in small amounts that you can add to other things. You know, you can throw it in with a soup. Uh, you know, there's... Um, You could just make little cubes of um, the stock, right? If that makes sense. And I, I that's why I love these little uh, ice cube things because I do that quite often. I had red wine. I know it's surprising, but I had red wine left over and all I did was throw, I put the red wine in here, froze it as, you know, red wine doesn't freeze very well, but I did freeze it. And then I got it. So whenever I make beef or anything, I can throw a couple of cubes of red wine in with my, uh, gravy. So be aware that if it's in a can, it's likely to have a lot of sodium. Uh, but again, what you've got in here is vegetables and meat. Make sure you've got cans on hand in case the price of meat is insane. Uh, you can always water it down or rinse the source of the vegetables. All right. So to me, I would recommend, for example, um, cooking your noodles with some of this runoff here. You know, that, that would, you know, use it in your noodle water. Um, would really add a great taste to your noodles. Hmm. You know, even your ramen, you know, what if you added the liquid from here in with your ramen, if you're a ramen person, right? So all these things are little experiments that you can do and save a lot of money. And I have such fun coming up with them. Uh, the the um, wrap still needs some more time, but it's getting better. You see it? Here it is. Um, and there's a little bit of it. Uh, you can see that it's absolutely thin in places. I'm going to carry on letting it just dry out. A little bit more uh, but that'll be ready for tomorrow and I already have one in the fridge but can you see that just a little bit of flour and water and by the way what if you made it from lentils you know what if you took lentils and pulverized them in your uh, blender or if you took quinoa you know have fun making them and you as you can see you can actually just make them on a plate easy to do. I hope you enjoyed that and that it gave you some ideas of how to eat more, you know, more fun things, but still on a very tight budget. My, <laughs> what I need to do, um, I won't be able to do it this week because I have company coming and I've got to, oh, by the way, there probably will not be a Friday broadcast, Friday evening broadcast, definitely won't be a Friday evening broadcast next week. Uh, the reason is I do have to go to a celebration of life, the one that I thought I was going to go to last week. Um, it's happening n on Friday so uh, of this week. So uh, I will not be able to do that evening broadcast. I will, I'm not even sure if I'll be able to do the lunchtime broadcast, to be quite honest, because I have all my neighbors coming in on Thursday night um, for dinner. <laughs> There's a big potluck happening at my place, apparently. And so I think I will probably be pretty exhausted come Friday morning. And so I may just cancel the broadcast completely on Friday for, for those reasons. And I'm certain you can understand that. Uh, I'm hoping you had some fun. I am hoping against all hope that what what makes cooking fun is that you play, you know, that, you, that you don't get too tied up with making the perfect meal. Uh, I'm pretty sure um, I'm pretty sure that anybody would love to see one of these on their plate. All right. Seriously. I mean, who would not want to have one or two of these, depending on who you're feeding? And 
to me, it's about, let's make it go in rotation, all right? Uh, I find that I get bored, I cook the same things. How about you guys? I cook the same things so often. And so what I try to do is every now and then I go, okay, how can we change this up a bit and make it interesting? I don't think these will go near the freezer. <laughs> Which is a good thing. Um, my big concern is the desserts. So what I need to do is to get really smart and package these up into little containers so that I only have uh, uh, two a night. Hmm. I've already had one. I may have to think that one through. Uh-huh. <laughs> so it's either two or, or Halloween candy, not both. You know I'm going to end up doing both, don't you? Lordy. This is why I put on three pounds this week. But it was fun. So, Jody, uh, thank you so much for the idea to do the pasties. Um, for, I actually want to say, have any of you made meat pie? I find the pasties are much better. They are easier to serve. If you do a meat pie, it's all sloppy at the bottom and this way, people get, a, you know, a portion. You know how big the portions are for different people. Uh, also, what if you gave them choices while you're making it? All right, I'm going to do pasties tonight. Do you want chicken or beef, you know, or do you want, what What would you like in yours? Do you want onion? And give, give, people, give people choices because then it's an individual meat pie for them. And there's something about it being personalized that makes it so much more tasty, doesn't it? As you saw, um, both these were overfilled, and I thought they would just you know, explode. But because I put the holes in the top, um, it helped the uh, steam escape, and they ended up, I, I couldn't, quite honestly, I couldn't have done them better if I tried. And even the one that I didn't think would work at all, but it did. And what I look at is, we did apple inside the cinnamon rolls. Oh, by the way, how bad was the cinnamon roll? I didn't look at the, the, um, mm. maybe, maybe there's a reason for that. There are no coincidences. Okay, guys, find the, let's see how bad the cinnamon rolls were. And this is per, for what? One roll, okay? Let's forget about the apple and stuff. There are 140 calories per puck. Sodium, 14%. Just so you know. That 2% fiber, that helps. 10 grams of sugar. Oh, but it's going to taste so good. So, although it's not good for you, um... <laughs> You're going to love it. And the family will too. Thank you so much for being here while we did this. You know, it's really interesting me to me that every week I sort of think, what can I come up with this week? And I wanted to say that if it were not for you guys pitching up here every Friday night, I probably wouldn't be doing these things. Isabel saying they they won't go into that freezer. Right. Now they're not going to go that far. I can assure you they're not going to go that far. Now, if I'm really well behaved, I will put the apple cinnamon rolls into the freezer. But you know it's not going to happen, don't you? Because I haven't got any room. That's my reason. <laughs> but what I have found out is they are really nice to do. And what a nice thing to do, take for um, something like a potluck. All right, individual, individual cinnamon, apple cinnamon rolls. I, I'm pretty certain that would be a very popular addition to any potluck. And what if you made, I'm thinking now, what if you made the pasties this size? All right, so they are finger food. 
another great thing for a potluck. So give it a thought and I will uh, love you and leave you. <laughs> Find some HP sauce and enjoy my dinner. Let me know if there's anything else you'd like me to cook. <laughs> See you next week. Oh, no, not Friday. See you Sunday. This is Dear Mama Sal saying, keep playing with food. It's all about, it's not what you can't eat. It's about what can we eat and have fun with. And as Jody says, you know, just do it in moderation. You know, do the portion control. One of these... It's not going to be that bad. Half of it with a salad, even better. So think about how do I make this healthier? And if you don't have any other carbs with it, I think it's a pretty complete meal to have it with a soup or a soup and salad and, you know, what a pasty. Great idea. This is Dear Mama Sal saying I love you dearly. Thank you for inspiring me to do these. We'll see you soon. Thanks, Jody, and bye-bye for now. <laughs>